Okay, this is just a little add-on to the end of Lecture 6 because I can't really afford any more time to spend on this sequential games at the moment, uh, though we will come back to these basic ideas of switching costs. Um, now, if you remember, we were looking at Varian and Shapiro and the, this basic idea that when your choices in, in the future are going to be hemmed in by the choices you make today, okay? So we want to think about hemmed in choices, etc. The the idea here is that you're going to have some switching costs. That's a new concept here we need to look at. No. This is just an add-on from what we did in lecture six. I want to take the idea of uh, lock-in, which is related to the notion of switching costs and hold up, which is related to the notion of other players take advantage of your switching costs, which helps them, but costs you. Okay, and, and we're not going to look in too much detail here, but just to see how we can use game theory to structure our thinking about these things. Now, if you remember, we went through a whole list of various types of uh, sources of lock-in and switching costs. Okay, you have contracts and durable goods purchases and follow-on products upgrades, you know, you got specific training that you might have to change and it'd be costly to change, you got uh, codes and formats and software and all kinds of stuff that might have to be changed, you got specialized suppliers like your doctor or whatever, then switching to other suppliers is going to be difficult or costly, uncertainty about what you're going to find out and just that cost of actually researching stuff and then you got loyalty programs where where if you make a switch, then you know, you're going to lose something. So all these sources of switching costs are kind of important, and definitely read Varian and Shapiro, especially Chapter 5, to get a handle of those. Very interesting stuff, okay? Uh, but we want to look at the strategic issues here. We draw a little game tree. Okay. Now we're going to start out with the blue player. Uh, where are we here? The, um, it's down here. The blue player is the supplier. The red player is the customer. The blue player is doing some stuff, okay, and makes some moves, and the, <clears throat> the red player, the buyer, gets to observe this stuff and basically doesn't like it, okay, uh, if, so, or thinks about uh, the fact he doesn't like what's going on, and he's got a choice to either stay with his blue supplier or he can switch to the green supplier, okay. Now, if he stays with the blue supplier, the blue supplier will do some more stuff, and uh, can look at the benefits and costs to the red player. And the idea here is instead of putting just a rank ordering of this, we're saying, what does every player think about this? Well, there's some benefits that he gets out of being in this relationship with his supplier or using this technology, and there's some costs, okay? And uh, you could think of the cost as the price that the blue guy will charge and the benefit that the benefit is some measure of the dollar benefit that the, the red player gets out of this whole uh, process, okay? But... Let's suppose that the price is getting jacked up or the quality is going down and you're thinking about switching to the green player. Well, if you switch to the green player, then the green player is going to do some stuff and then you're going to get some payoffs. Now, the idea here is the structure of these payoffs. So, like, you've got some benefits and you've got some costs. So the costs here would be related to what the, blue, the green supplier charges you. But you've got these extra costs, which if you switch okay, from the blue guy to the green guy, you're either going to be giving up these loyalty things, you're either going to be having to undergo some search costs, you're either going to be having to pay out of some sort of contract, um, you either got some extra other equipment you're going to have to change over and switch over, you've got to retrain, uh, all kinds of things which might happen, and that's what these switching costs are here for. Now, notice this is just a, a labeling system really for us to keep track of the, the choices. Okay? It's really just the choice for the red player, and, and I think this one student said, well, wouldn't it just be benefits over costs? Well, it is, yeah. We, would, we have to kind of tease out what the benefits are and what the costs from blue and what the benefits and what the costs are from green, what the switching costs are, and on balance you'd want to uh, switch if, if you get more benefit here than you get over there. Okay. But it could also be that you might get some net look like just at the price and the benefits you get green look good, maybe even better than the price and the benefits you get from blue, but by the time you take in the kind of the switching costs, it's not a very uh, attractive thing to do. So you're locked in to staying with red, okay, because of these sources of switching costs. Now, let's just look at it from the perspective of the supplier now, okay? So we've got the situation we had before, but now we're putting in some payoffs to the blue player, the supplier. And 
the payoffs to the blue player are related to the cost to the red player. Okay, so think of this as like a price that is paid by the red player, and this is either the same price or after some deductions or additions, it's the price received by the blue player, okay? So if the blue player kind of racks up his prices, then the red player is going to get smaller and smaller benefits. Okay, that's one idea. And that's why you might want to switch. Also, let's say the benefits you get are related to quality decisions the blue player makes. Well, the blue player could, uh, by incurring extra costs, improve quality, and that's going to improve your benefit, but he doesn't really want to do that because extra costs to him mean less benefit for him, okay? So again, he might be running down quality, and that's why you're thinking of switching. The hold-up problem occurs because it costs you to switch, okay? Now, let's just say that the green player is about the same in terms of net benefits as the blue player, net benefits for the, for, um, for the red player, okay? Um, but slightly better, okay? And it's coming slightly better because the price is a bit lower, or it's slightly better because the quality is a bit higher. But to get over to that green player, you're going to have to pay these switching costs, and by the time you look at them, it's just too large, so you're locked in. And what happens that you can think of is the blue player has some choices here, you know? He can start to raise his prices or reduce his quality to keep it so you're just not willing to switch, okay? That is, he can hold you up and extract some value from you. And so that's really the, the strategic idea between the hold up uh, 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 relationship between the hold up problem and the lock in problem. Lock in is created by my high switching costs, and the hold up is when some other person can extract value from you because you're locked in, and you're kind of held up. Okay? Now, what you might want to try to modify this game, and uh, we're not really going to look at changes in strategic. Um, situations until a bit later in the course, at least look at a, a whole summary of strategies you can have for a changing game, but one thing that uh, Ferry and Shapiro stress is like, let's go back in time here, okay, to, if this is the uh, this is the present, well yesterday this was the future and this was the present, so back here when you're, before you're actually committed to staying with this blue supplier, okay, you could have gone green. Now this is before you're committed Okay, so you don't have any switching costs at this previous kind of stage back here. So if we take the example of, of writing, a, say, a contract for a lease or something like that, you know, before you sign up for your lease and put down your deposit, um, you know, you could switch to alternative places to, to rent. Uh, you know, if before you, you, you actually end up buying your Mac or your PC and then get locked into that and all the software with it, you know, you've got a, you've got a, a choice of what computer uh, to buy. Um, before you go and you know train up on, on uh, skills for a specific job, you have an option to train for skills for other jobs. You know before you've incurred these other costs that lock you in. So um, uh, the idea is that to anticipate, look forward, and reason back to try to say, okay, I can't avoid getting locked in. That's just the nature of the game. But what I can do if I go back one step here is to try to negotiate something so my benefits are going to go up and, uh, or the prices I pay are going to go down or the quality is uh, going to go up something which we call a, a sweetener. Okay, And we could draw some arrows and things in here to say, well, what I really try to do is, is make a, do some bargaining or negotiating with the blue player at this stage about what my benefits and stuff are going to be here once I'm locked in because I know once I'm locked in, this guy's going to take advantage of me. But he can't take advantage of me until I'm locked, until I'm locked in. Okay, well, that's I know that's kind of rapid. Uh, we come back to this idea of modifying a particular game to change it to your advantage uh, later on. We get into chapter nine. Cheers, John.